political leader of the MSJ, the Movement for Social Justice. Today I'm wearing black, as you can see, and some of course will say that when you wear black, it's because you're in mourning. But I prefer to say today that I'm in solidarity. Solidarity with the victims of horrific murders that have occurred over the past uh, week or, or more. I'm talking about, of course, Abigail Chapman and her daughter Olivia, her daughter's friend, Michaela Mason, their landlord, Scotty, Mr. Scott, who I knew from UE days and from when he was teaching at Modsec, um, all who were killed horrifically down in Sobo Village, Dabre, where the MSJ actually has many friends and supporters and, and activists in that community who knew um, either Scotty or the Chapmans or all of them together. And then also I remember um, Anita Bahadur who was stabbed in the Kweze, broad daylight, um, by a man whom she knew and previously had a relationship with. And then there was Sergeant Ken Painter who was shot and killed. Um, he was from Labre, but I think he was, he was shot and killed at his home in, in Gasparillo, member of the Defence Force and senior officer of the Defence Force. Again, and apparently an issue related to, to the family. And then Dexter um, Hospitalis, who was also killed apparently in some situation over conflict. And Cheryl Ann Cooper, who was also tragically pregnant, um, and she was also murdered. All of these and so many more I'm in solidarity with. One, one person said many years ago, don't mourn, organize. And that I think is what we have to do. We have to take a leaf, interestingly, out of the students who suffered that tragic incident where 17 of their colleagues, fellow students, were killed at the Parkland School in, in Florida. They mourn, yes, for a period, but then they have organized. And their organizing has not only mobilized students in their community or in Florida, but nationwide throughout the United States and even, even further afield. And they're calling for strict gun controls and banning of certain kinds of weapons and so on. Here in Trinidad and Tobago, we didn't need mobilization to get gun control because we do have laws um, which say that a firearm is illegal unless you are permitted to carry one by the Commissioner of Police. But we have so many illegal guns in the country. And then many of the murders recently were not committed in domestic violence issues by guns, but by stabbing and by pieces of wood and, and other, other weapons equally vicious and equally dangerous and equally murderous. So we have to organize. And I'm taking a leaf perhaps out of the page of our new president, and I want to congratulate Her Excellency Paula May Weeks um, on a, a really powerful, excellent inaugural address. She had signaled already that she was going to be straight talking, that she understood what was happening in our society in the many interviews which she did, both television and newspaper interviews in the days after the announcement that she had been elected as, as our next, our sixth president. And she certainly did not disappoint anyone um, with her inaugural address on Monday last. So congratulations to her. One interesting thing that she said was that you have to have your faith, but you can't live by faith alone, that you have to take action. And that is why I say today that um, I'm not in mourning, but in solidarity, and that we shouldn't mourn, but we should organize. I am still, like the president, very much a person with confidence in Trinidad and Tobago. I have great hope for our country. And that's reflected too with the fact that just over my, my heart, you will see, if you can see it at all, a little red and a little white and a little black. So therefore, the red, white and black is very much not only on the shirt, but is in my heart and certainly in my mind. And so I have hope in the future. We, we in Trin Trinidad and Tobago often are spinning around like, you know, the people who came out of the bondage, out of Egypt, into the Promised Land, or heading to the Promised Land. So Moses took the, the, the people out, his people out of bondage and so on from the Pharaohs and went 
towards the promised land. But Moses never got to the promised land with his people. For 40 long years, Moses and his people wandered around in the wilderness. And it took Joshua to take them out of the wilderness and into the promised land. And we, Trinidad and Tobago, have been wandering around for the last 40 odd years since independence, since our Republican status 42 years ago. We've been wandering around in the wilderness because you see, this Republic of ours, set up by the first Republican Constitution of 1976, has really failed our country. Our institutions have failed. The criminal justice system, just look at it. The mess with the Chief Justice. Imagine judges don't know whether they're entitled to sabbatical leave or not, whether they can accumulate vacation leave or not. The very new shop steward in any good trade union would be able to tell you what the collective agreement says, what the terms and conditions of employment are. But judges with all the law and all the knowledge and so on, highest judge, chief justice, seems to be confused about that and so too the president. So our institutions and many of the people who run our institutions, our institutions have broken down and many of the people who run them are failing in their responsibilities. We in the MSJ, we have offered some very straightforward, basic solutions to our problems. Look at the, the crisis of, of the Sea Bridge. Almost a year ago, it was Easter last year, when the crisis broke, when the Galicia was being pulled and, and the TT spirit was down and had to go on dry dock, which was not really dry dock, it had to be totally retrofitted with engines and transmission and turbochargers and everything else. And the express was, was limping along. So a whole year has gone by and there's been no proper resolution of the problems that the Togobonians in particular have to face in terms of travel between Trinidad and Tobago and businesses in Tobago are suffering and so on. Prime Minister appointed a one-man committee, Christian Mute. Integrity Commission said they're investigating. The Joint Select Committee of Parliament said we must investigate. And lots of people appeared before the Joint Select Committee, it was on television, we all saw it on the Parliament channel. And months afterwards, the Mute report, what does that come to? Big fat zero. Integrity Commission, what does that come to? Big fat zero. Joint Select Committee investigation, what does that come to? Big fat zero. We, the MSJ, proposed a very simple solution to deal with all of this, you know. A special prosecutor, given powers, given a budget, given the capacity with selected police officers to work with him and so on. Forensic auditors, forensic investigators who could trace money, track money, cut to the information, just like Bob Mueller is doing in the United States as a special prosecutor. We said that has happened in Trinidad and Tobago before. It happened under the UNC government where Carlos and Phillips was a special prosecutor. It happened under a previous um, government when um, a and R. Robinson was Prime Minister, Desmond Allen was appointed Special Prosecutor to look into the drug scout report and so on. So we have had it before and it worked. So we said deal with corruption, Special Prosecutor, Seabridge issue, Special Prosecutor and take action against those who are guilty. Don't just come on public platforms and you hear the PNM um, saying, well, this happened under the UNC and this corruption and that corruption, nobody going to jail. And then you hear some of those same UNC MPs who were accused of doing wrongdoing now saying the PNM is doing wrong. No, all of them, all of them really have no moral authority to speak about corruption. MSJ says very simply, special prosecutor. And then we say, we say for domestic violence, last week we had a, a media conference, we said very, very simply, what we should do is amend the legislation urgently, just like they came together for anti-gang legislation, come together urgently. No joint select committee or parliament, cut to, cut to the chase, do your job. No big long hours and hours of debate and blame game and so on. Come to parliament, amend the Domestic Violence Act and whatever other pieces of legislation that may need amending and so on. Allow the police to detain anyone against whom a report has been made that that person threatened the life of someone, either a woman or children. Once a threat has been made like, like that, the person who made the threat should be detained and then not put in jail, not lost in remand yard and so on, but investigated 
by psychologists, by social workers and so on, to see if that person is a threat. And if that person is a threat, then that person should receive institutionalized care and so on until that person is no longer a threat. Very simple, very simple. And if the police can't find the person who made the threat, then what should happen is that the person whose life is being threatened should immediately be given protection right away. Because we can't have a situation like has happened in the last few days where people have made reports and the person who has made the threat walks about free and then kills. So we have made those recommendations, simple recommendations. And the MSJ has many simple recommendations, simple answers to deal with all the many problems that we have in this country. But that is why um, we don't get progress because really, um, when you look at it, we are the only real alternative.